Lesson 8.6 is about the sine and cosine ratios. Much like the tangent ratio, sine ratio and cosine ratio represent relationships between side lengths um, with respect to a given angle. So I've reproduced two identical triangles here, and they both, uh, I'm, in both of them I'm going to look at angle A, and uh, where we understood that the tangent ratio was the ratio of opposite over adjacent um, to an angle. The sine ratio is the ratio of the side opposite a given angle over the hypotenuse. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. That ratio of those side lengths represents the sine ratio for a given angle. And the cosine ratio is the ratio of the side adjacent to a given angle over the hypotenuse within a right triangle. And just like tangent ratio, these ratios can be used to solve for missing side lengths when you know angle measures or to find angle measures when you know side lengths of right triangles. So there's a cute little acronym that you can use to help you memorize these when you're first learning the, uh, the three basic trade ratios. So first is uh, sine. Um, the S in sine is opposite over hypotenuse, S-O-H. So that like spells so. And cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. So C-A-H, and that spells ka. So I have so, ka. And then uh, the tangent ratio is the ratio of the opposite leg over adjacent leg. So T-O-A, toa. So we have so, ka, toa. And it sounds like an Indian princess name. Uh, SOKOTOA is the acronym that we use to remember the, um, the ratios. Okay, so as an example, let's say that I want to find the side lengths x and y to um, the nearest integer. Uh, if I know the angle measure, I know the hypotenuse of 100, and I know the angle measure of uh, 28 degrees. So given an angle measure, and a hypotenuse, I can find x and y using the sine and cosine function. So first of all, with respect to the 28 degrees, if I focus on x, x is opposite the 28 degree angle, so that's going to be the sine function. So I can say the sine of a 28 degree angle should be equal to the ratio of the opposite side of x over 100. And then using my algebra to solve for x, if I multiply both sides by 100, x is equal to 100 times the sine of 28 degrees. So on my calculator, I can enter it like this, and the calculator will give me parentheses to enter the 28 degrees in. So um, x is approximately, to the nearest whole number, 47 units long. And then to find y using that same 28 degree angle, y is adjacent to the 28 degree angle. So I can use the cosine function. The cosine of 28 degrees oops, is equal to y over 100. So multiplying both sides by 100 to solve for y, I'll get y is equal to 100 times the cosine of 28 degree angle. And again, my calculator will do this for me if I enter 28 um, in, for the number of degrees. So y is approximately 88 units in length. So that's given angle measure finding side lengths. And we can work this in reverse too. We can find angle measures when we know side lengths. Okay, so let's um, use, um, in this next one, we're going to use a um, 65 degree angle that is in, uh, this is an isosceles triangle. I can see because the big triangle has both these sides of x. And uh, if this is an altitude that comes down here, forming a right angle um, out of the vertex angle, then I know that that altitude always will hit the isosceles triangle uh, through its midpoint. So I do know that this 
segment is 12 and this segment is 12 if the entire bottom of the triangle is 24. So um, I'm using now the 65 degree angle, I have an adjacent side of 12 and I can use that to solve for x or y. So let's say that first I want to solve um, of this right triangle, x is the hypotenuse and, and with respect to the 65 degree angle and 12 is the adjacent side. So I can use the cosine ratio and say that the cosine of the 65 degree angle should be the ratio of the adjacent side of 12 over x. So multiplying both sides by x, x times the cosine of the 65 degree angle should equal 12 and dividing now, to isolate the x, dividing both sides by the cosine of 65 degrees. So I'll get this all calculator ready. I have x is equal to 12 over the cosine of 65 degrees. Then I use my calculator and I get x is um, approximately 28 units long. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse. Now let's say I could use that hypotenuse uh, and y, and I could use the cosine of 65 degrees as y over 28. Um, or again, I can use the, um, I, I can with respect to the 65 to solve for y, I could use the tangent ratio. I think I'm going to do that. I've got a y and a 12 and opposite over adjacent because then I'm using exact values for my leg length and degree measure and I'll be more accurate. So I can say the tangent of a 65 degree angle, tangent TOA being opposite over adjacent, is the ratio of y to 12. So y is equal to 12 times the tangent of 65 degrees. Oops. 12 times the tangent of 65 degrees. And entering that on my calculator. I get y is approximately 26 to the nearest whole number. Okay, and one last easy example to show how to use your inverse functions with sine and cosine. It's the same as with tangent. I have an angle that I don't know, x, I want to find out. I do know uh, two sides uh, lengths here. I know the hypotenuse of 28, and I know the side adjacent to angle x is 11. So with adjacent and hypotenuse, that tells me to use the cosine function. So I can set this up as the cosine of x degrees, which I don't know what that is, should be the ratio of 11 to 28. Okay, now when I know the, the ratio of the side lengths and I don't know the uh, degree measure of the angle, I can use my inverse function. So I can say x is equal to the inverse cosine, so on my calculator I'll use cosine negative 1, which is um, inverse cosine, and I'll give it the ratio. Hey, the ratio of the leg lengths is 11 to 28. Please give me back the number of degrees of this angle. And I should get x is approximately, to the nearest whole degree, 67 degrees. So those are examples of how to use the cosine and the sine functions. Uh, when right angle trigonometry.